Hello and welcome to the Mindful Millionaire YouTube channel podcast. Today I have the good fortune of speaking with my good friend, Dustin Heiner. Dustin is a real estate investor. He has been teaching people about real estate investing for several years. He has a podcast. So many cool things about Dustin. He runs a uh, conference that I've been a part of called RubeCon. But today, the reason we're meeting is I asked him a question, which is if you received a million dollars tomorrow, how would you invest that? What are you going to be thinking about? Where is that money going to be going? And this is the conversation that ensued, it took a few months to come together, and it's worth it. It was worth waiting for from my side because I saw some things that Dustin shared, and I share some things that Dustin hadn't thought of, and I'm sure that you're going to walk away feeling more inspired about investing and thinking about where is that next million dollars going to come from and how can I invest it? Enjoy. Dustin, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Absolutely, Lisa. This is exciting. When you pose this question, I was like, man, my mind started racing. There's so many things. So I'm so glad to be able to talk to you about this. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I had a client who reached out to me who was coming into at least a million dollars of investable assets that got the wheel spinning because she is very interested in real estate investing. We both share that interest um, and we both have a lot of experience in that in that area. And immediately I thought of you, but then the more I thought of you, I thought, what if we had this conversation where you and I talked about what do we see ourselves doing in the context of somebody just gives us a million dollars or we earn a million dollars or we sell a property and all of a sudden we've got a million dollars of investable assets what would we do with it right now like we're talking here in september of 2023 things change trends change but you and i have been doing this for quite some time i've been in real estate investing for 30 years how long for you 2006 was when i first started yeah, so we've got a lot of combined experience and we have different angles and different different skill sets and different uh, ways that we go about solving this. So I thought, what a fabulous conversation if we could just brainstorm, give folks who are thinking about coming into these assets in the future. And what I've also found that I'm just going to plant a seed for everyone listening is I found that when you know what to do with the money or you have a clear plan, it is amazing how the money comes. So I want to plant that seed that just by having this conversation, we are inviting you to have a million dollars of investable assets to do something with. So anything you want to add to that, Dustin? I totally agree that when you have a limited mindset, like if you're thinking of there's not that much to go around or you have very little, or if you just have that limited mindset as opposed to an abundance mindset, like where you, there's more to go around, there's more people I can help. I found the more I shifted my mindset, the, instead of thinking of like, woe is me, or I don't have this, I don't have that, and looking at the limitations, that actually stopped me from moving forward. But when I started looking at it from an abundance mindset, oh, there's plenty to go around, number one, or these little roadblocks that were originally holding me back, they're actually not that bad. I was just letting my attitude stop me because there was a roadblock. But when I changed my attitude, when I started realizing that it's there's, the world's not out against me, that I could actually keep moving forward, that is when I started seeing opportunities open up. And with those opportunities, I took a step into those opportunities. But also with that, like you were saying, Lisa, like you also, we've been doing this, like investing for quite a long time now. I mean, collectively, we have lots and lots of experience in investing. And we've been moving forward every little step that opens up. You know, it could be getting education, learning from somebody. It could be that some a property opens up that we can buy, then we move forward. But you know, take, taking the leap to the big things, it also comes with little steps along the way. So for me, it was changing my mindset so I could take the little steps, and then the big steps come. And when you have that mindset, man, what would I do with a million dollars? How would I invest that? What do I spend it on? That is opens your mind up to the possibilities because honestly, the possibilities are endless. The money is there. You just got to figure out either where it's at, how to get it. We can do that. So I love that this is something that you and I talk about because you are so great on mindset. When you come to my conference and you just open and blow everybody's mind. And so they get so much more into like, oh man, I can do this. So I, I 
am so excited to hear what you're going to say about what you're going to do with the money. <laughs> it's funny. We're both like on the edge of our seat and like, what are you going to say? The, I want to hit home what you just said, because even as we're talking and you're, we're sort of opening people's field of awareness through this conversation, even if you don't have a million dollars today, when we turn towards an abundant mindset, we know people who have a combined million dollars to invest. Just because we don't have the money doesn't mean that we couldn't reach out to family, to friends, to come up with ideas, to figure out ways that we could accumulate that money to invest it. And now you're the integrator of those of those funds and you're coming up with the plan. So I just want to make sure people understand that this is abundant thinking versus scarcity thinking, which is like, I don't have it. I'm never going to have it. I don't even need to listen to this conversation. So I'm just saying, hey, stay with us because you never know when you have an idea how you can bring it into reality. Well, and to add to that, I'll quickly say that people might be thinking, well, you know, I'm worried about about borrowing somebody else's money. I'm worried about, you know, I'm going to look like a salesman. I'm going to look all, you know, just kind of sleazy talking to people about it. Well, I used to have that thinking too. What I had to realize was people want opportunities, just like you want an opportunity to do something. Other people in your life also would like to be presented opportunities. Let's say you have something that you are going to invest in, or you're going to build a business or whatever it's going to be, but you know, without a shadow of a doubt that it's going to work so well, and you're going to do everything you can to do it. You're going to put all your money into it. Well, more than likely, you know, one, two, 10, however many people that would say, you know what, I want to take part in that opportunity because I believe in you, like we're friends or like I've known you for so long and I trust you. And they at the same time are going to get a benefit for taking part in it. So we're not taking from people, we're helping and lifting everybody up. You're beautiful. Perfect. Uh, one of the things that I think is also helpful to note is that we're approaching this conversation from an investment standpoint. So sometimes people get those lines blurry. And I think it's really important to say that while if you, a lot of people would receive a million dollars and part of that money would go into the investing strategy and part of it would fulfill needs that you have that are separate. But I want to encourage you to understand that those are two very different conversations. And it's important to realize that both, I think, Dustin, I don't want to speak for you, but I just want to say that I look at everything in my life from what is the investment opportunity first and foremost. If I get residual benefits personally, awesome. And many times I do, but I'm always going to decide first, is it going to make financial sense for me to do this? I'm not blending my personal needs again, you know, yeah. Any Anything you want to add to that? And I agree with you. And at the same time, like the position that you and I are in, because we've taken those little steps, because we've kept moving forward, we're blessed. And I like the term successfully unemployed. Like we don't have to work for money. So it's going to have a little bit of twist to it. But the be the basic premise is what we would do is we would obviously make sure our needs are taken care of. I'm going to make sure we have a roof over our heads. I'm going to make sure my family's fed. I'm going to make sure we're taken care of. But once we have that, which Lisa and I are blessed to have that, now we can just let our minds run. And like, oh, how can we help more people? That's what Lisa and I both love to do. Help more people, um, build more businesses, invest in more things, but do things to help other people. But then that at the same time benefits us. So yes, love that. Yeah. Beautiful. So, okay. The big question. <laughs> I, do I get to put you on, on the spot first? Cause I really want to, cause I feel like I'm going to okay. piggyback after off of you, but I, so I'll, let's say, I'll be fine. Let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So a million dollars shows up in the bank account and we all know that time is money. So we are thinking immediately, okay, we got to do something. We've got to do something with this. Can you even walk me through, even before we go into the solutions, like what's going through your mind? And maybe you knew that money was coming. Maybe you didn't, but just walk me through what happens for you when that when that realization a property needs to be sold. Money is going to be coming into my bank account. What happens? 
So the older Dusty, before I got into investing, I would think of what other things can I buy? You know, like we talked about, like not just needs, but now, oh, I got some extra money. What can I buy? Like a new car or, you know, whatever it might be. But now where I'm at now, I start realizing and I take the perspective instead of having it to where, what can I spend this money on that doesn't make me money? I start thinking of the principle of number one, passive income. And then what can I buy with this that'll help me to afford something that I want? Give you an example. Let's say I wanted to buy a brand new truck. I, I love trucks and I want to buy a big brand new Ford F-150 or something like that. And I could like take, I mean, there's a million dollars. You could definitely take, let's say 60 grand and go buy. A, a really nice truck. I could do that, but instead, that because that money once it's put into that truck, it's a depreciating asset, and actually more of a liability because it just keeps going down in value. Instead, taking that sixty thousand and then buying a property that makes me money, so that I can then take that money that I make from that property, you know, renting it out. And then buy that house with that money that comes in from that property. So that's the new perspective I have grown into as a business owner. So what I look for, with, let's say I get a big chump, chunk, clunk, chunk, whatever, I, I, that, my brain's literally going off clump <laughs> of money. There we go. I get a big, lots of money, a million dollars. <laughs> my first thought is, how am I going to turn this into passive income? And then how am I also going to make that passive income afford me what I want to buy? So that's the big principle. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's great. It, it, it's a great foundation to operate from because I would say it's very similar for me because we're in the situation we are in. It might be a little bit different than the way other folks, but I would be looking at how can I take this money that came in and double it within a certain amount of time? Like I'm thinking about where is this money going to take the least amount of effort and have the biggest potential gain over a five to 10 year window? I love that idea. So your thought is, how can I double this as fast as possible? I didn't even, literally didn't, didn't even cross my mind. My was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm more of a, um, like my thought is uh, strategically like, like, okay, where can I next? Not like big things. Like you're great at big thinking and vision and like big, you help people get past that, which is great. So that, that gets me thinking, how do I double this? I love it. Well, how do I triple it? How do I make <laughs> even more? Like, I love that thought. I, I'm now implementing that into my brain now. Thank you, Lisa. That was perfect. <laughs> well, it's really powerful because again, we both have gotten here because we've made good decisions about our investing. And I don't think I looked at it that way before. For several years, I did look at it more from the cash flow perspective, which would be both of you and I are familiar with the FIRE movement and this idea that you need to make sure that you're going to have, if you're going to quit your job or you're going to you know, not want to work in a traditional role anymore, start your own business, how can you make sure that your financial needs are going to be taken care of? And so the cash flow is super important. But right now, for me, the cash flow isn't as important. In fact, if anything, I'm managing to a lower stream of income but I want to build legacy wealth that can be passed on to my children in the future. And so it allows me to, not that I don't care about cash flow, but I care about that appreciation probably a bit more. I completely agree. Because now, as you're as you're explaining it out, when I was looking to quit my job and become successful and employed, trying to build up cash flow, that was a huge priority. But now that's not necessarily as much of a priority as opposed to increasing the total amount of money that I have, like the appreciation or starting a business that expounds or um, uh, just dramatically grows, multiplying the uh, value that I put into the business or the money that I put into the business. You know, so now I'm looking at how do I multiply as opposed to just, you know, add with passive income. So I think that's a great way to go, especially in the position that you and I are both in. And let's be clear, I think why it's super important what you said, and I want to go a little bit deeper in this, and I want to hear the solution for cash flow, 
is a lot of people actually need that money to create a cash flow. And we're not here to say there's one right way to do it, but your expertise has been helping people develop a cash flow stream that gives them choices so that they can leave a job or they can retire or they can acquire additional properties and have some, you know, ability to do that by, by gaining greater equity in the properties that they have. So when you're approaching it from a cash flow perspective, you know, going back to this bigger question of like a million dollars, one thing that I have for you is given the time that we're in right now, where there are probably markets that are not as favorable from an appreciation or cash flow perspective. Do you feel like it would be more advantageous, maybe from a cash flow perspective and a long-term wealth building, that you would divide that into 10 chunks and like have 10 different properties? Or like give us an idea of how what goes on inside your head of like how do you maximize that money? You know, are you wanting to to get a two million dollars by getting 50% loan to value so that you can create leverage? Like, tell me what's going on in, in your mind when you're thinking about cash flow. Yeah, when I think about cash flow, I'm thinking of how little or how I want as little money come out, out of my pocket as possible to get the most return in the passive income every single month over and over again. So when I buy one rental property, if I buy a $500,000 rental property, I mean, that's half of your million dollars. I buy that now, let's say it rents for $2,500. That's a good amount, but you have half of your money taken up and you're only making $2,500 a month. Instead, how much better it would be if you broke it down a little bit more and you had a down payment of, it's going to be, let's say it's 20%. And you're going to buy a $200,000 house. What's that? $40,000. Well, that's $40,000 taken up and you're still making, let's say, $400, $500, maybe dollars a month in passive income. So it's much less money coming out of your pocket, much more passive income coming in. A lot more ins and outs and nuances of how to actually do this. But that's what I'm thinking is how can I use this money and break it up to get the maximum amount of passive income? In fact, just yesterday... I was interviewing a student of mine. She actually came to RubeCon. You probably met her. Her name's Suzette. Super sweet, nice oh, lady. Yeah. Anyways. Hi, Suzette, yeah, if you're Suzette's listening. <laughs> there we go. I'll have to tell her. We, we, we talked about her. So in three months, she well, she retired, and then she started investing. And in three months, she now has six units buy, uh, making money for her. And she's making $3,000 a month in passive income from these six units. For a, a fourplex and a duplex. I mean, she's just crushing it. It's going so well. But what we do is think about passive. No, uh, one part of your question was like, what about appreciation right now in the market cycle? Right now, you're not going to get appreciation. I mean, it's just the way it's going to be now. Unless something crazy, crazy happens, it seems like we're at the top of the market. I don't see it going up anymore. But there are fantastic deals still out there. My students, like I said, they're still buying deals. It's just that we need to find those deals that make cash flow. Now, I would say back in 2010, you know, when the crash of 2008, 2010 was, that's the time to be buying for appreciation because it's like doubled since 2010. So what I'm looking for as little money coming out of my pocket per property as possible. Or here's another thought. This is another thing I would be investing in, not just real estate. I'm investing in businesses. I love I'm an I'm a business owner. Even though I'm an investor, I own businesses. My one of my business is a real estate investing business that owns inventory, and that's each property. Each piece of property is another piece of inventory I put in my business. So I would also look at so if you're thinking of chunks of money that I would put in certain areas, definitely whatever deal comes my way. I'm going to make sure it's a good deal and then buy it. I won't in my I will not in my mind say, okay, I'm compartmentalizing. This is how much of this, this is how much of this. For me, that million dollars is tools. Think of like a tool belt and you have a whole bunch of tools in there to use. Well, whatever deal comes your way could be a business you want to buy, could be a property, but you know it's going to be good for you in the long run. You use that money as best you can. So let's say you used forty thousand dollars to buy the house, and then you got a loan on it for the rest of it. Well, your tenants are paying for that loan. That's great. You don't need to keep spending that money. So that's how I would approach it. I'm thinking properties as well as businesses. But I'm, in the end, it comes down to how can I actively turn this money into more money and passively right now, rental properties that make passive income are going to be great. Appreciation, not so much. But what I love is creating businesses that make even more money, that multiply the money that I put into it? So lots of questions on what you just said. Um, the first is, is let's use your example where you said, okay, if I could take 40,000 
and potentially get a loan so that you're buying a property. Is that right? For um, what was yeah. that? 200,000? 200,000. If you spent the million dollars doing that, is that even something that's like for a new person or someone who's coming into this? Would that not be overwhelming to try and buy, use up all the money in that strategy? Like, would you do some larger or maybe you know that it's so disadvantageous in the structure of, of what's going You're on? You're 100% like, right. Help me with that one. So so yes, I personally love residential four units and below. Very, very simple to do. If you bought a house ever in your life to live in, it's the exact same thing, except you just find a property manager, help you to manage the property and make money. But if you had like, if you did that $40,000 over and over again, it's going to take a lot of properties to use up that million dollars. Because like you said, Lisa, you know, time is money. We don't want to just have our money sit. There are huge property. That was one start. Now, let's say you wanted to get into apartment complexes where you would be able to say, I'm, I'm going to be able to put in $300,000 into this one apartment complex. And it's going to make me so much more money in passive income. And the value over time goes up because you're it is what it really comes down to when you buy a multifamily or apartment complex, you're buying a business. It's valued on how much money it makes every month, as opposed to a single family home. All the other comparable sales, that's what the value is for. So if you buy an apartment complex, if you buy a hotel, I invest in hotels too. I lived like playing Monopoly when I was young. So now I got to get to hotels, which is great. <laughs> but what if you use that money in bigger chunks to buy bigger assets, because everybody, just like Monopoly, we want to get to multifamily. That's the end goal. We get to multifamily because you spread that over multiple doors instead of like, you know, a single house has one door. But if you have a 200 unit apartment complex, there's 200 doors spread out, economies of scale, which means expenses go down per door. So you make more money per door, all the above. So yes, I think that's a great, because if you could jump right to apartment complexes and skip all the building process and monopoly and get right to hotels, why wouldn't you do that? So is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I'm curious about that. Like, could you actually buy an apartment building for $300,000? It would be a down payment. It would be a down payment for a larger loan on the property. Yeah. And have you done something like that? Just curious. So I personally have not taken like the $300,000 put it on, but I have gone into other, it's called syndications, basically multifamily owner operators, not owner, but like, like they're basically companies that are operating, making the money. And I am an investor into that company and I get ownership share. I get equity. I get the income as well as everything that comes with being an owner. Yeah, totally. And that's, and that's what we've been doing. It's interesting. Um, and then maybe just a little bit about buying into businesses. Are you saying that you're buying into other people who have set up the real estate business and you're buying into that business or something else? Just give us a little so more it detail. Does, it would be any business that looks like it's got a potential for really good. Like I'll give you an example. It doesn't have to be real estate too. It could be an other business. Let's say you've you really are thinking, I love traveling and I want to make money in traveling. And so I want to buy a travel blog that's already making money. And then I can take over. And then whenever I travel, I could post on there and I make money on there. So look at existing businesses that are already working. But here's another thought. Let's say you are wanting to get into real estate and you want a different type of business. I think in the next couple of years, there's going to be economically some tough times. I think it's going to happen eventually. And with that, Sadly, some people might be losing their jobs, which means they lose their house, they have to downsize, whatever it might be. But what do they do? They get storage units. So I'm looking at, okay, what type of business would I buy? I would absolutely buy a storage facility so that they, I mean, those are just cash machines. They make so much money. I would definitely buy into that. But if you're thinking about other types of businesses too, like the, I said, that the website that does travel um, that where you can make money there, or if you see a laundromat and I'm like, man, that laundromat, let's just make sure that makes money every single month. Then I could buy that property or that, that business and then have a property manager or somebody managing the property so I don't have to do it or managing the, the expenses. So I'm always looking for businesses that would make money. I've even heard, um, so like laundromats are really, really good. Storage units are really good. Even car washes are really good. So things like that, things that are making money already, how can I put that money, my money into there and even bring some expertise and make it better? Right. No, that's great. And yeah, the possibilities are endless. Do you, when you're about to do something new that you have never done before, 
what goes through your mind when you're doing that? Do you find people who have done it before to hang out with them, ask them questions? Absolutely. Yes. My first thought is, who can I get around to help me bypass all the problems, mistakes that they've done? How can I fast track success by far? And that's the reason why I have like, you know, the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference that you're a part of. I mean, you crush it every single time you speak there. And it's all about bringing people together because like I know I have limited knowledge. And I have to, I, I've done it before where I've trudged through I, the school of hard knocks to try to get things, something working. Eventually it works, but how many years of my life does it take? How much money does it take? How much better being around the right people? So by far it's being around the right people, even getting coaching or buying into an existing business that has an owner there that's willing to stay around something like that. But it's all about help having other people help me fast track success. How about you? So it seems yeah. like, because you have lots of businesses yourself and with that, you know, from real estate investing to you know, your coaching and like all that stuff, how do you approach something brand new that you want to get into and you see this could be very lucrative? Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you that it's all about making sure that I am not entering something blindly because I think I've been around the block long enough to know that most people make mistakes, costly mistakes, when they don't have people who are resources to them. And you can't just take it at the surface. For example, you know, you're going to buy property. You can't assume that it's like the real estate agent is going to know enough to help you. Like you're going to need more resources than them. They're good in one aspect that may be purchasing, but even negotiation, I wouldn't make the assumption they're great at that. Like <laughs> there's, there's certain roles that I allow people to do. And then I try to find other people who have done it before, who can answer our questions. Uh, for example, a couple of things come to mind. So my husband is a general contractor. We've been building houses, living in them for a few years, flipping them, taking advantage of the tax benefits for, for many years, which has been amazing for us. Uh, it, it's kind of a foolproof way because I know that I can, no matter how much we increase in appreciation, because we've done this for 30 years, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not, because we have been the ones who built the property, uh, we're at least selling for what we've invested in it. We haven't less, lost money, you know, even through 2010 you know, and all of that. But when we decided to go into commercial real estate, for example, one of my clients was a commercial real estate broker. And so I was able to go to her and really get a strong understanding of like, what were these contracts going to need to look like? What were our leases and what are triple net leases? And what are all the things that I need to know about before we even buy this building? And then, you know, who are the resources I need to make sure that this is profitably being run and we're protecting ourselves? You know, do we need an attorney? Do we need um, a specialist in, in, well, can our accountant handle the load of this property, right? Or if we bring it to them, are they going to be able to help us? Because not that's assumptions that you can't afford to make like, oh, I've never done this before. You know, you're going to have to go find another CPA because I don't do this sort of thing. Like those aren't the things, the surprises that you want to get. The other thing is, is when we decided to go into the Airbnb business, again, uh, I had a friend, actually this friend who inspired this conversation, who had been very, very successful in Airbnb for several years and was a super host, had great ratings. And I went to her and I said, can you teach me what you've learned? And we created a class at the time together to teach people about Airbnb. And in the course of creating that course, we immediately became super hosts once we opened the doors and we were, we've been very, very successful in that business because of the people that I know and, and, you know, having a coach or paying someone, you are going to totally get that money back. That's the difference between scarcity mindset. Oh, I'm going to do it all by myself or abundance mindset. This is just the cost of doing business. This is how I'm going to win more. Like I'm, I'm looking at that. But when I think about a million dollars today coming into um, my bank account, uh, which is actually something that I'll be thinking about not too long from now, a year or so from now, I am very oriented right now to like what you were talking about, more of these passive opportunities where there is collectively uh, a group managing a project, buying hotels, 
uh, buying, I, I'd be open to collectively buying businesses. Like I like doing things together with other successful people. So how can I be a part of a community that would allow me to get privy to that, or at least know that I've surrounded myself. So no matter what question comes up, I'm going to have resources, um, to answer those questions. And, and you and I both know Annie from Good Egg Investment, uh, I've invested a well, few we times both in, in there. We, we yeah. actually both invest together in the hotels, which is fine. Uh, yeah, that's so great. Like it's been phenomenal because uh, we're busy people. I wanted, you know, I kind of dipped my toe in the water in um, a year and a half ago or so with like 50,000. I'm like, I just want to try it out. That's another thing that I think I really love what they've done recently, which is start this $10,000 fund. And I'm, I'm spreading the word because- what I think, you know, we're having this conversation, a million dollars comes in and now what do you do with it? But I would prefer for people to have been learning as they go with the money that they have. So like if you've got $10,000, go learn about, you know, Annie's fund or something else where you can start to see what it's like to take the risk, sign the check, give someone the money in this case, trust that you're making a good decision for yourself, but get some experience. So I'm just going to pause there. Yeah, I, I love that idea. And that got me to thinking, so when I bring on students that for coaching for real estate investing, when I bring them on, I get a good amount of students that have a good amount of money. Let's say three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars, so either in their four hundred one k, whatever it might be. But they have a lot of money to invest. This is the first thing I always tell every single one, every single one of these students, and all the students need to learn this. And the ones with very little money, let's say twenty thousand dollars, we can get them to invest, but they learn this inherently because they have very little money. But the ones, this is the downfall about getting a lot of money all at once. The downfall is you can be, you you cannot be as aggressive in saving your money. Like you can think, oh, you know, oh, this house, you know, it's only $150,000. You know, like we just go ahead and pay it. Like, this is what they're asking. Let's go ahead and pay it. I'm like, no, don't do that. Like you need to fight for every single penny. Offer 128 or $102 or $102,000. Like offer lower so you can negotiate, fight for every single penny. Cause it's so easy. Ah, I got enough money. Let's just go ahead and do it. No. When you're starting with very little money, then you are fighting for every single penny. When you're starting with more money, it's almost like, eh, we could just do it. So learn that lesson at the very beginning, like lock in your brain. Every single penny that I'm spending out, I'm fighting for. I don't want that money to go out. I want to fight it. Does that make sense? I would say 100%. And um, I think my husband rolls like that still to this day. So just to be clear, like he's like, whoa, you know, like, like, let's figure this out. And, um, and I'm like, oh, it's, it's only, you know, $50,000. It's such a small investment. He doesn't look at it that way. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe you never have to lose that because I think he and I have been a really good yin yang, like I'll pitch for an idea and he'll tell me like all the concerns he has. And that only if I overcome those concerns, are we actually investing? So there's nice. a sounding board. You know, my wife and I the same way. Yeah, it's healthy. I think it's a really healthy way to be in partnership where you're like, okay, I know you're really excited about this, but let me poke holes in it to make sure you haven't missed something. I love that. Now, I had a question for you. So you have a fantastic book called The Mindful Millionaire. If we got a million dollars, if you, so let me ask you, how do we become mindful about that money? Like that for me, one is being mindful about it, not just throwing it away or just, you know, giving, buying just useless things or overspending and that sort of stuff. But taking the principles of the mindful millionaire, how do we make sure we're mindful about that money? Great question. <laughs> I think this evolves over time for me, even though I wrote the book and it came out three years ago. What I have to say is, is that the most important thing we can do for ourselves is to get really, really, really clear about what our life is about. Like what's important to us? What do we deeply value? What is the, what are our priorities? 
And I think that you and I rushed into the beginning because you and I have spent so much time figuring these out, these things out. That's part of the reason I think we're so successful in getting what we want is we got really clear on these are my priorities. Like number one, it's not money. It is not money. <laughs> it is our relationships, our family, for example. And, and when we know, you know, that sort of hierarchy of values, it allows us to be very conscious of the decisions that we make in how we're going to spend our time. You know, if, if way up there at the top is freedom, which I think it is for both of us, we are going to be very careful not to get into a project that takes all of our freedom away. And we're okay with losing some of our freedom, but we're also going to have conditions. And maybe the first year it, we kind of blow those conditions out of the water. You know, we make exceptions, but we know that where we're headed, which is I need, you know, more people to support me. I need more experts to help me make this work. Like we're always going back to, is this in alignment with my most highest values, my purpose, my, you know, faith, like all of those things, that is a mindful millionaire. Another part of the mindful millionaire is the understanding of how important it is that we see ourselves as enough and that in any given moment, we do actually have enough, which is hard for some people because a lot of people are listening to this. They're like, no, I definitely don't have enough, Lisa. And and when we realize that no amount of money in the world is going to, first of all, help us know that we're enough, we can at least start working on that part of the, of the job. Now, what I found is, is that when we feel like we're enough, not just because we're telling ourselves mantras every day, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough, but because we truly believe that, like we're showing up to our life. We're showing up as, you know, a great parent. We're showing up as a great friend. We're showing up as a great leader. Like we gotta be doing it's the a work part of you. to feel this. Yes, you you gotta express, you gotta live authentically. But when you're living authentically, what happens is the uncanny magic appears where people wanna associate themselves with you. They wanna work with you. They wanna hire you. They wanna pay you. They want to invest in you. Like the possibilities are endless, but if you don't feel like you're enough, it is a very bumpy road out there. So that's the other piece of it is coming to the realization that you are enough and ultimately that you have enough is, is everything. I love it. And I will add or, you know, tie in with the So it's, it's a combination for me, what I, I perceive as being number one, confident in yourself. Like you believe in yourself, number one, and you also like, you just embody that you don't have to keep telling yourself over and over because it's who you are. So confidence, but confidence can absolutely go in the wrong direction becomes arrogance and pride, which we don't want that. So it's the, the fine line of having confidence, at least just knowing who you are, being comfortable in your own skin and know what you you have to offer everybody from there being humble and being humble and looking to serve when you have the confidence and the focus of serving other people my goodness like you said people would just want to be around you because number one they're going to be get a benefit of being around you number one but number two they also think this person actually cares about me. How much more would it be? If, how much better would it be if somebody actually realizes, man, this person actually cares about me. I want to be around them as opposed to what can I only get out of this person because they're confident and I'm going to just ride their coattails. No, what? Well, I, and you have this in your businesses as well. So I've coached lots and lots of people how to invest in real estate. Now my students believe in the vision so much of helping and serving people, teaching them how to invest in real estate. My students are coaches now. My students are working in the business now because they, they say, I just love your vision. I want to be a part of it. And if you have that vision, but you have the confidence because you know what you're talking about and you're comfortable in your own skin, but you're also humble because you want to serve other people. Humility is not like putting yourself down. Humility is thinking less of yourself. Like don't even think about yourself, thinking about other people. That's what humility is about. So I like couple all these things and tying on exactly what you said. It's you have to have that inside of you internally. And then once you have that, then doors just literally open up. Yeah, it's so true. You know, it's, it's something I want to just share back to 
like the mindset is so much of it, the, the practical application back to like who, you know, I want to share something else. Uh, a year and a half ago or so, we sold our commercial building. We realized that it wasn't really working for us. We didn't like getting these phone calls on the weekend and we had to figure out how to fix the air conditioning when everybody else in Sedona needed to fix their air conditioning. You know, there were just things that were happening that didn't feel good to us and we sold it. And when we got the lump sum, we decided to split it into two parts, one that would give us more flexibility for a project that we had underway, um, building a new house, but half of the proceeds went into a 1031 exchange, and I got matched up with an incredible uh, broker, a financial broker, who has access to uh, DSTs, so deferred sales trusts, you know, that, that the money could go into kind of like what Annie does, where she's pooling investor assets to buy a property. This is being done throughout the, the country on a regular basis. And the cool thing is, is having a broker, I, when I get a lump of sum of money, he doesn't just do 1031 exchanges. He also does, you know, um, non, non tax deferred uh, business deals. And so he's constantly sharing with me a stream of those investment opportunities, whether, you know, I'm an accredited investor, but uh, most need to be, but sometimes you can do them without an accredited investor. You have over a million dollars of investable assets that allows you to be seen by the IRS and by the federal government as an experienced investor. So you're allowed to do more is basically the most simple way of explaining it. But again, back to having good resources of people that you can move that money quickly and make investments because these deals are available all the time. And they're, you know, they go through a very stringent process. You still have to do your own due diligence. But I just wanted to add that in there and make sure I was completing the loop of like, what would I do with a million dollars? I'm going to be on the phone with the broker. I'm going to be on the phone with, with Dustin. I'm going to be on the phone with Annie. I'm going to be looking at like, who's got opportunities and which ones really resonate with me and how fast can I invest in those in those opportunities. And I'm taking your idea of how can I double this the fastest as possible. I love that. That was just, that, I was like, my goodness, I can't believe I didn't even think of that. That's just not even on my <laughs> radar, but now it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to inspire folks. It's even better when we're inspiring each other in our conversations. This always happens whenever I hang out with you. You always make me just to open my mind bigger. I I want to really say thank you to you. Um, thank you for letting me be a part and inviting me. I won't say letting, but like inviting me to be a part of RubeCon. It has made such a huge difference in my life. Uh, not only have I, you know, deepened friendships that already existed, made new friendships, but I learned a lot about myself, not just as an investor, but also as a leader. And I'm eternally grateful to you creating the conference, to teaching um, and modeling your truth and you being authentic and allowing me to be my authentic self. And there's differences between us, but we always find the common ground. And I'm so grateful that you show up that way. Thank you. And uh, I, you, and it's, uh, it's great that we have so many different, amazing people that we're all different and we all see things differently, but we could all help each other out. And we can all make sure that as we are building things, as we're helping other people, as we're, whatever we're doing, like, even though we all see things differently, but we also have the best interests of the other person at heart. That's what's that's what's great. I love about RubeCon. In fact, like you're obviously one of my close friends that I brought to RubeCon as a speaker, as well as all the other speakers there. They're all terrific people. And with that, we all help each other to grow. So it's just a blessing. I'm so glad you're a part of RubeCon. And I remember the, the first time you came and did the keynote. I was like, Lisa's going to crush it. You're a little, I'm, I'm just going to say this on the air. You're yeah. a little nervous. You're kind of a little uh, you know, <laughs> uneasy about it. But I'm like, dude, Lisa's going to actually crush everything about it. And so, yes, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. And I, it, it shows in the attendees, the people that come to the conference, they're just, so, they, they feel so much like a family. They feel like they belong here. They feel like they're loved. That's really what it comes down to. Cause that's, that's why I wanted, I wanted a community of people that felt like they belong to it. So you are definitely a huge part of that. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, I haven't been to a conference like this, so I can't co totally compare, but I, I'm pretty darn certain that it's exceptional that that energy of like love and acceptance and 
um, inclusion is, is occurring. And I feel that every step of the way, and I don't want to be any, I don't want to show up anywhere in, in my life. If it's not with that resonance of inclusion and you have done a fa fabulous job of inspiring that. Thank you so much. And like I said, thanks to people like you, definitely for to you um, and helping that and f fostering it, like continuing it. Like that was my vision, but you guys are, yeah, just tremendous. But I really love the idea of how we can help other people view m money like we do. Like we, we look at it as um, an opportunity to enhance our lives, not the means in, in the end. Like that's not the end is not the money. The money is our lives being more enhanced, having more time with our family, relationships being built up, doing the things that we uh, love to do. And then honestly, being able to serve more people. And a good friend of ours, ours um, Adam Carroll, you know, Adam, obviously, and um, he told me one time, and uh, it's the, the four legacies that we you probably know this, but the four legacies that somebody like any person should strive to grow in their lives. Number one's a money legacy, basically have enough money to buy whatever you want. That leads into time, having a time legacy, having that money to then afford you the time so you can do whatever you want. And then number three leads into relationships. So money leads into time, time leads into relationships, building those relationships so that they are solid foundations of your relationships. And then that relationships lead into service. So money leads into time, time leads into relationships, relationship leads in service and service to other people, where you and I, we're blessed to be at that point where if you can get to the service legacy, like I'll say it this way. When I bought my first property, I felt a good accomplishment. When I quit my job, became successful and employed, I had a good accomplishment. Like I felt good, but I feel fulfilled when I serve people. Like I feel so much internally, like but more fulfilled. That's the best word I could use, fulfilled. When I see my students get their first property, when I see the community, when I'm walking down the halls of RubeCon, I feel fulfilled that other people are being able to be uplifted by this. So those four legacies we all need to have. And so I love with the Mindful Millionaire uh, book that you have, like, it's all about making sure that we internally are the right person ourselves and then giving that out to the world. Mm, so good. And Let's make sure. So folks, tell us about RubeCon. We didn't know that we were going to end up talking about RubeCon, just so everybody knows. But like, of course we would. But we'll put this in the show notes as we share this. So notes, when is it happening? And where is it happening next year, 2024? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. So it's an annual conference. And we're going to be in St. Louis, March 14th through the 16th of 2024. Next year, the year after, we might be like an East Coast, but yeah, we go back and forth, East, West, and Central, but it'd be St. Louis, March 14th through the 16th. And if you guys use, anybody listening, use the promo code podcast, you'll get 10% off your ticket. And you, I even ch changed it up. I even did something special this year. I even made it so there's a buddy pass for like 99 bucks. Like you could bring your your spouse, you could bring a friend, you could bring somebody else for, for really, really, really ex extremely cheap because my goal is just to bring as many people together in a community, but the community, it's real estate wealth builders, conference is a name, but if you go R-E-W-B-C-O-N, rubcon.com, use that promo code podcast, you'll get 10% off your ticket and you'll see Lisa, myself, and a lot of other amazing people there. That's awesome. And check out the Mindful Millionaire book, uh, wealthclinic.com forward slash vision gets you the first chapter of the book and meditation. And then your other website, Dustin, where would they go to learn more about what you've been talking about today? Totally. Masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. If you put that forward slash free course, I'll literally give you a free course that'll show you how to do all of this. I've had a lot of students just invest just from that free course. You could even text the word rental, R-E-N-T-A-L to 33777. Rental to 33777. I'll literally show you exactly how to do everything that I've just talked about, but on there. And so also, you know what's kind of funny, Lisa? I've actually been getting into Instagram and trying to uh, connect with people on Instagram. I love getting messages like DMs from people on Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's the Dustin Heiner, T H E Dustin Heiner. Um, I'm not that arrogant, and you know that Lisa, but I'm not that T H E is the only <laughs> one I can come up with. There's no other handle that was taken or that was available. So, but yeah, so on Instagram, hit me up on DM. I love hearing how people are being successful, and even if they ask questions too. Beautiful. Thank you so much for this conversation. Do you, how do you feel we did? 
I love it. I well, anytime you and I get together, it, it it's just terrific. I remember when we first met, we were hiking up Camelback uh, a <laughs> number of years ago, and then we even had a retreat here in um, Arizona when there you know COVID was going on. You and I were hanging out by the pool and everything. I mean, just every time we get together, it's just. I think you and I we have very similar energy, and when it comes together, it just it's it's terrific. <laughs> I would agree. So thanks everyone for listening and being a part of this. I hope that you're taking away a lot of cool ideas or at least the very next step. So decide what is your very next step and go do it. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get all the latest updates of meditations, tapping videos, uh, different coaching calls that I share on the YouTube channel. And also be sure to take my money and chakra quiz. This shows you where you might be out of balance as it pertains to money and exactly what you can do for your next steps.